Okay, here's uh, the integral formula for the inverse sine of x, so this function here, arc sine of x. Um, so, <clears throat> just like the integral of the natural log of x dx, uh, that was done in the previous video, um, that one used integration by parts, this one also uses integration by parts. So, uh, again, it's not really obvious that we have to use integration by parts because that's uh, typically used for uh, integrating products of functions but um, it can be used for other stuff like this too. So remember, integration by parts, the formula says uh, the integral of u dv equals, uh, let me try a different, different blue here, so the integral of u dv, and eh, not much better, equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so that's our integration by parts formula there. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and apply this to this. So again, uh, it's not really obvious that we have to use integration by parts because it's usually used for integrating products. But um, if you have to integrate something like this, you're not sure what to do, the uh, technique doesn't jump out at you, uh, just try all the things you know. Um, you know. Think about what might work best, try some of the things you know, and then integration by parts should be one of them. So if we try that here, it'll work. So anyway, um, we gotta choose u, right? That's how we do integration by parts, choose u. So we choose u using the liate or whatever rule. Um, so choose u to be the first type of function that appears on this list. We really only have one function though, so we're just going to choose u to be the arc sine of x. Okay. So u is the arc sine of x. So then remember, once we choose u, uh, dv is automatically everything else, including the dx. Okay. So u equals uh, arc sine of x, and dv is just uh, dx. So since u is the arc sine of x, then uh, du is uh, 1 over root 1 minus x squared, and then dx. Okay, so du has to have a dx on it, remember that. Um, and then the derivative of arc sine of x is just uh, 1 over root 1 minus x squared, so keep that in mind. Um, and then since dv is dx, then we integrate that to get uh, v, so v is just x. Okay? And remember, no arbitrary constant on the v when we do integration by parts, we explained that in an earlier video. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and apply this, uh, or put these into this formula up here. So this is going to be uh, uv, so that's arc sine of x times x, so that's uv, a uv, uv, uh, minus the integral of v du, so v du, uh, one on top and then dx over here. Okay, so that's what we have here, so now that's going to uh, equal, let's see if we can get a better marker here. So it's going to equal, uh, so let's rewrite this as x times the arc sine of x, and that's going to be minus uh, integral of root 1 minus x squared on the bottom here, and then on top we just have x dx. Okay, so now how do we integrate this? So there's no formula that jumps out right away at us for integrating this, right? So what we can do is think about what are the techniques we know? Well, um, if you've been following along with the videos, uh, the only techniques we've talked about so far are uh, integration formulas, which there aren't any for this, um, and substitution and integration by parts. So we could try integration by parts on this one also, but let's not do that. It might be kind of messy. Um, I'm not sure if that would even work. I, I don't think it would. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, we shouldn't try that. Uh, not first, anyway. So we also know about substitution, so let's go ahead and try that. So remember, when you do substitution, um, you want to pick a u, right? But first of all, we already used u in integration by parts, so we shouldn't use the same variable over again. So we talked about that in the last video, kind or in an earlier video, uh, kind of, sort of. So um, it's mathematically bad etiquette, it's kind of mathematically impolite to use the same variable twice for two different things, and technically that really is incorrect, so we don't want to do that. Um, so instead of u, see, so we already used u, we already used v, so let's use t. Okay, so let's make a substitution, we're going to say t uh, equals what? So let's make this substitution, we're going to say t <clears throat> equals, um, now remember, when we do substitution, we want to look for a function and its derivative, or maybe a function and a constant multiple of its derivative. Do we see that anywhere? Well, here's 1 minus x squared, the derivative is negative 2x. We don't have negative 2x, but we do have an x, so that's a constant multiple, so that's good. Okay. Now, if you don't uh, see that, or if that doesn't jump out at you, remember, also for substitution, try to let this variable here be the inside guy. So what's the inside guy? Well, 1 minus x squared is inside of a square root, so we can try to uh, let it be that. But either way, a um, couple different ways of thinking about it, and that's, that's what we want to let t be is 1 minus x squared here. Okay? So then dt is negative 2x dx. Okay? But again, I don't have negative 2x dx, I have x dx, so what I want to do is uh, slap on a negative 2 here. Okay? 
So now I do have negative 2x dx. Well, hold on, I just changed this integral around, okay? I just multiplied everything by negative 2. So that's not really okay to do that, unless I divide everything by negative 2 also. So let me tack on dividing by negative 2, which means uh, multiplying by negative 1 half, okay? So same thing here. Don't forget that we saw this minus sign out here. So um, since I multiplied everything by negative 2, I have to divide everything by negative 2, or in other words, multiply by negative 1 half. Okay, so we can put the minus sign out on top here, um, or wherever. Uh, so multiply by negative 1 half, multiply by negative 2, so those, you're really just multiplying by 1 in a special way that's useful to you. So that's what we did here. Um, okay, so now, uh, how's that help us? Well now this, got erased a little bit, so that's 1 minus x squared in there. So now this here, uh, t is 1 minus x squared, so this guy on the bottom now is the square root of t. And negative 2x dx, that is dt, okay? It's dt. Okay, so now, uh, let's go ahead and rewrite all this stuff here, or uh, continue with it. So it's going to be x, arc sine of x. Um, now, minus negative 1 half means plus 1 half. Okay. Uh, and then integral, so what do we have here? dt on top, and then on the bottom, just square root of t, right? Okay, so that's what we got going on here. So even though the dx is off to the side right here, it's the same thing as putting it up here. So we could say uh, dx up here and we can move it off from the side here. So it's the exact same thing, so that's why it's okay to put dt on top. Okay, just want to point that out. Um, anyway, now how do we integrate something like this? Okay, so uh, we have a square root on the bottom. Do we know any integration formulas for something like that? Well, yeah, first of all, we could do power rule. Okay, so we can rewrite this as t to the one-half on the bottom, which means t to the negative one-half. But uh, it's actually a little bit simpler than that. So. Let's come off to the side here. What if we want to take a derivative of the square root of uh, t? Well, or let's say d dt, I should say, sorry, d dt of the square root of t. Um, then that's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of t, right? So you could work this out with the power rule. That's t to the 1 half. So the derivative is 1 half t to the negative 1 half, which simplifies to this. So the derivative of the square root of t is 1 over 2 root t. Well, do I have 1 over 2 root t? Well, technically, yeah, I do, right? So we can toss this 1 half into the integral. So actually, we can rewrite this whole thing uh, as x arc sine of x plus, we can toss the 1 half in there, so that's 2 root t on the bottom. Uh, let's pull the dt off. Okay, we're going to pull the dt off of the integral here, or off of the top of the, uh, off of the numerator. Um, so 1 over 2 root t dt. So if we want to integrate 1 over 2 root t, we're just going to get square root of t back, right? So, because um, the derivative of root t is 1 over 2 root t, so remember, integral is just uh, derivatives going backwards. So uh, if we integrate this, we just get the square root of t. So that's really uh, helpful. That's nice. But again, if you uh, don't see that, you could just do the power rule. So this is t to the negative 1 half. You can just do the power rule for integrals. You'll simplify and get the exact same thing. Uh, totally nothing wrong with that. Um, OK, so this is x arc sine x plus the square root of t plus arbitrary constant. Okay. Now, we're not done uh, yet, right? We have to go back to x. So what is t? t is 1 minus x squared. So let's uh, put our answer in terms of x. So x arc sine x uh, plus square root of 1 minus x squared plus an arbitrary constant. Okay? And that's it, right? That's the answer. So this is the answer to uh, the integral of arc sine of x dx. So if we want to integrate arc sine of x dx, we have to do integration by parts. And this is the answer we get right here. Uh, it is x times the inverse sine of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared and then plus an arbitrary constant. So that's uh, the integral formula for the inverse sine of x. So more integral formulas for inverse trig coming up in the next few videos.